Okay, we're moving on to question three. Okay, and question three is focused on derivatives. Okay, when you see questions like this, there will always be a question that says, derive the derivative of a certain function from first principles, right? First principles. They're testing whether you understand how to use this formula here. Okay, this is the first principle formula. Okay, it's basically saying as h tends to zero, right? So if I have a graph and it's saying we have two points, as the distance between those two points almost coincides, right? What is the derivative? Okay, that's what the formula is saying. So let's firstly write out the formula. Hopefully I have enough space, right? I seem to be very bad with space, spatial management. I don't even know if that's correct English that I just used here. But anyways, I think you know what I mean. Okay, let's just write this out, right? Sometimes I, I enjoy writing out the formula because I, I find that it, like, it calms me a little bit, but maybe that's just me. Okay, so this is the derivative that we, I mean, this is the function we have that we have to find the derivative from first principles. So wherever x is, we sub in x plus h. Wherever, um, uh, in this case, whenever there's an x, we just keep the original function. Okay, so we're going to have the limit. Never never drop the limit until we've actually sub substituted it in. Okay, because that is displaying to your marker that you understand what a limit means. Okay, if you just drop it, you're saying to your marker, I actually, hi diddly, I don't care about that little, that little uh, limit at all. And that does not display competence in this area. And what we're wanting to do is we're always wanting to display competence. Okay, so, uh, sorry, I just want to get my signs right here. Okay, so do you see here, it's actually negative in there, but it's also negative when in the actual function. So you're very careful of mixing up your signs, right? It's very easy to do. As you can see, I just did it myself. Okay, so, oh goodness, now we need to times everything out. Okay, so let's, I'm just going to do the x plus, five, x plus h, x plus h here, right? Which is x squared plus xh plus x h plus h squared, which is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Okay, I know that was quite quick, but I don't want to spend too much time doing um, sort of, uh, you know, expanding notation um, as opposed to focusing on what we're doing here. Okay, so what we do with first principles is we always do a bit of cleanup, right? Big focus on cleaning up, right? So if, if you like cleaning up, then this is your number one, okay? So you can see that I am, do you see what I'm doing? I am taking what I've done here and multiplying it by negative five. Do you see that? And that's why all the signs change to negatives, okay? It's not just some sort of pulling it out my, my hat, right? It is complete algebra, okay? But now it's gonna be plus five x squared. Why? Because a negative and a negative make a positive minus x. So that's my numerator. This is my denominator. Okay, so let's see what cancels, all right? So this guy is gonna cancel with that guy because that's a negative, that's a positive. Happy days, okay? Then this negative x is gonna, um, uh, is gonna cancel with that positive x. So we left with the limit of h tending to zero, okay, of, let me just check, negative 10xh minus 5h squared plus h all over h. Okay, but now what we can see, and this is something that people often struggle with when it comes to first principles, is you multiply it all out, and then when you get to the stage, you actually factorize it again, right? And the reason we do that is because we don't want there to be an h in the denominator, right? Because an h in the denominator, if we sub in zero, is going to give us an undefined equation. And we don't want that. We want the derivative, right? So, now, I'm definitely not very good at spatial management. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's just um, plus one. Okay, so we took H because it's a common factor. The whole at the top, took that out. Have an H there. Perfect. We were just cancel those H's. Okay, now, because we've canceled those H's, let's sub in zero in the next step. So the next step, I hope I can fit this in here, is negative 10x minus 5, 0, where h is, because we have now dropped the limit, subbed in 0, plus 1, which gives us negative 10x plus 1. And that is our derivative. Now, you could be saying, well, like, how do I know that's right? 
Well, we know that there's the short form of the derivative, right? And we know what we do is we bring down the exponent, we times it by the base, we subtract one from the exponent, right? And we do that for all terms. Look, shortcut, first principles, we know it's correct. We know it's correct. So we know that we just got five marks, right? Fantastic. So don't mark it yourself, even when you know it's right, okay? <laughs> I did that in one of my previous videos. I'm not encouraging you to mark your own work, not ideal. Um, but this is basically how you go about this. You will always have a question like this. If you don't like these questions, well, it's easy marks, right? And by easy, it really is easy marks, right? Because you can check your answer. The, you can check your answer using your shorter, your shortcut for, for deriving um, the derivative, right? Okay. Cool, let's go into the next question. It says, hence or otherwise. Generally, they say hence or otherwise. They kind of actually just want you to use what you've done in the previous question. So don't always try find like reinventing the wheel. They've scaffolded these questions for you so that one question flows into the next, okay? As you saw in the finance video, okay? Determine the equation of the tangent to f of x at the point x equals one. Now, what they're testing is whether you understand what a derivative is right? A derivative is fundamentally a gradient. This here, this, this is a straight line, right? It's in the form y equals mx plus c, isn't it? Right? With a negative gradient and a plus one intercept. So this is the function, the straight line of the gradient of this function, okay? So it's very important not to lose sight of what we're doing when we're doing um, derivatives, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we know that f of x, right, as we've just derived in the previous question, is negative 10x plus 1. So uh, let's just, uh, sorry, let's just sub in the 1, right? Because if they've asked us, what is, what is the, the, um, the equation of the tangent at this point, 1, right? So we sub that in, we get negative 9. But what this tells us is the gradient of this tangent at point one is negative nine. So when we're looking at y equals mx plus c, right? And you might be saying, well, how do I know the tangent is a straight line? A tangent by definition is a straight line, okay? So when you see the word tangent, you should be thinking this equation. So what we've got is we've technically worked out what m is, right? We've worked out that that is what m is, okay? So what we're gonna do now right, is we're just going to work out what C is, okay, and you could be thinking, okay, like, that is interesting, okay, how, how, do I, how do I work that out, okay, so what we have is we have y equals negative 9x plus C, so we need to get a point, okay, we need to get a point that we can sub into here, right, that will solve for this, Okay, so you could be thinking, oh, panic stations, stations of the nations, what must I do? Okay, well, we know, right, that a tangent is still going to pass through this function, isn't it, right? So now, all we have to do is we sub 1 into this function to get the y value, right? So I'm going to do it down here because I'm my spatial management, as I said, is uh, basically non-existent, right? So I'm going to sub it in, right? to my original equation, okay? And I'm gonna get negative four. So now we have a point, right? We know that x1, negative four, right? Is a point on this function, right? But it is also, right, the point that the tangent intersects, right? That point, or passes through that point. So now, no problem. Let's just sub in this point over here. So we say wherever y is is negative four, wherever x is, is 1 plus c. Okay, this is very, sort of, maybe should have done that to the side. I'll put it underneath here so you can see. Okay, so let's solve that, right? And c equals 5, okay? Because I brought the negative 9 over that side becomes positive, and it equals 5. So my equation of the tangent is negative 9x plus 5. Okay. Again, it does seem like quite a lot of work, but it's not really, okay? It's just a little bit, little bitty, right? But the most important thing here is when they give you a point of the tangent, you must think, oh, okay, it's a point on the tangent, but it's also a point of my original function, 
Okay, so don't panic about that because originally, even when I was doing this now, I was like, wait, 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 how do I do this? And then I was like, Mogs, go back. Think about what is a tangent? Um, how do we go about this? They've given us a, they've given us an X value. Find a Y value, okay? So even if you don't know how to do it originally, just think through these things slowly, right? And don't panic, okay? That's that question. Let's now move on to our third question of this question, okay? So now they've just asked for dy, dx. What's quite interesting here is they show you all the different notations of how to show a derivative, right? So we know here we have f dashed, sorry, there we go, f dashed of x. We have dy by dx here, and we have a big d with a little x here, with a subscript x, okay? So you must be familiar with this notation because it's all asking the same thing, right? It's not like they are like some witchcraft going on there, okay? So... I'm just going to write out the question for us and I'm going to write it like this. Okay, because that will help us, right? Because we actually, we don't want it to be in one term like this because it, it kind of messes with us a little bit. So let's split it into two terms, okay? So that becomes x squared, right? And what is this, right? This can be written as x, 3 over 2, okay? And we know that when this comes up, it becomes a negative exponent, Right, so it would be x, 3 to the 2, minus 1, which is x to the 2, plus x to the 1 over 2. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually just transformed, right, what we have over here, which looks quite tricky, into something that's actually completely doable, right? Because now we can just apply what we know, right, that shortcut to deriving a derivative is, which is dy by dx, so we have 2x, right, bring, it, bring that down to the base, subtract 1 from the exponent, do the same thing here, right, negative 1 over 2, so I'm saying a half minus 1, negative half, now you can just clean it up a little bit, it's not strictly necessary, but you can if you want, and that'll be our final answer, okay, you can, if you want, even do it like um, sort of fix it even more because okay, okay well that's technically negative one right so if you don't like negative exponents and often they discourage people from um for, well students from leaving um their their answers in negative exponents you can also write it like this right but you should still get marks even if oh wow my square roots are looking like very strange okay so that's how you write it and it's like most positive form if you want to put it that way okay so that's what i've done that's the final answer, okay? Um, again, biggest thing here is that you see that you can simplify it, right? If you try to jump into getting the derivative of this, it's going to get a bit messy, right? But this is a lot easier, okay? Some of the AP Math students might know some different um, approaches to doing this. I don't, I wouldn't necessarily encourage that here because they, they wouldn't assume that your um, that students would know those different methods. So try this method, right? Um, but again, if you have a different approach and you can still get the correct answer, you're welcome to do that. I'm just showing you approaches, right? So that's what I would do. That's your final answer. And let's now go to our last question of this question. So now we have this very interesting looking um, set of two brackets, right? This one's to the negative one. Okay, so we know that's a denominator. So let's just write it out in its denominator. Well, not in its denominator form. I don't think that's correct lingo. But with its denominator, right? Instead of its denominator being up by its numerator, right? So that's what it looks like. But now, right, what you should see here is this is the difference of two cubes, isn't it? Right? And you could be saying, oh, I don't know. Oh, I would never have thought that, right? It's something you should always look for, right? Because 8 is the cube of 2. Um, x cubed is the cube of x, and 27 is the cube of 3. Now, difference, and the difference of 2 cubes. So when we did, I think it was polynomials, right? We learned this difference of 2 cubes rule, okay? And if, if this is all sounding like Greek to you, right, you should maybe go and go over these notes again because what you do here is you can now write this in the form of two brackets right because this is an approach that we can use with the difference of two cubes right what you do is you take the cube of the first term which is 2x minus the cube of the second term 
okay? We're using that negative, right? Because it's negative in there. Here, you square the first, you square this first term, so you get 4x squared. Then you square that term, okay? And then here in the middle, in the middle term, you times them together, right? So we square, multiply them together, then we square the second term, okay? So now all we need to do is we need to put in the signs. So here, right, we put in a plus sign because we are squaring negative 3, okay? And that's what gives us positive 9. But then here, you always do the opposite sign to what was in the first bracket, okay? So now we've done the difference of two cubes, but what's interesting is you can see that this is now the same as this. Do you see that? So you can just cancel them, right? So now we actually have a very simple little derivative to do, which is 2x minus 3. What is the derivative of 2x minus 3? It's 2. Okay, so a question that looked really complicated, actually the trick was seeing the difference of two cubes, applying the rule. Again, if this rule is like, you're like, what is going on, right? Panic not. Go over it again, right? Remember what I said, the important thing here is about the signs, okay? Right? Then we left with 2x minus 3. We get the derivative equals 2. Simple, 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 okay? So that is the end of question 3, okay? Now we headed towards some sequences and series, which is one of my favorite sections, okay? Um, but I hope that was helpful, and I will see you soon.